ministerial meeting is the last ministerial level event of APEC China's year and a meeting that directly prepares for the economic leaders meeting. As co-chair, I believe through close cooperation and active support of you all, this meeting will have positive, practical and comprehensive outcomes laying a solid groundwork for the upcoming economic leaders meeting. Just now, Minister Wang Yi reviewed what APEC had done and achieved over the past 25 years. I totally share his comments. As we see over the past 25 years, in the spirit of open regionalism, centering on the Bogor Goals established by our leaders in 1994, active and individual actions, APEC has made great contribution to advancing trade and investment liberalization and facilitation and strengthening economic and technical cooperation amongst its members. Currently, APEC members add up to 48% of global trade and 57% of global economy, serving as driving force of global economic growth. As the largest, highest level, and the most influential regional economic cooperation forum, APEC plays an irreplaceable role in advancing communication and cooperation among members, promoting prosperity and progress of the economy of the Asia-Pacific and beyond. In the meantime, we should be also aware that the road ahead for APEC is not smooth. And economic cooperation in the Asia-Pacific still faces multiple challenges. The world economic recovery continues to slow down. There is a lack of growth momentum. The international market demand is sluggish, and the basis for recovery remains unstable. Though economic globalization continues to deepen, there is yet to be a rule system that is commensurate with the current situation. The Doha round negotiations move ahead amidst the trades and turns, and trade protectionism is on the rise. Regional economic integration is accompanied by fragmentation. The Asia Pacific has become the most interconnected in terms of global value chains and supply chain, but there remains gaps of development amongst its members. There is still room to grow for strengthened connectivity of industrial sectors, human resources, infrastructure, organizations, and information. Facing these new conditions, APEC members need to show sufficient wisdom and courage, continue to firmly support the multilateral trading system, accelerate the Asia-Pacific economic integration process with FDAAP as its long-term goal and global value chain cooperation as its focus. At the same time, we should actively conduct economic and technical cooperation and seek mutual benefits, win-win results and common development through closer partnerships. Since the beginning of this year, under concerted efforts, we have had broad and in-depth discussion on this year's trade investment issues and reached a series of practical and meaningful important consensus on supporting multilateral trading system, 
promoting FDAAP, advancing cooperation on global value chains and supply chain, strengthening ecotech and capacity building, and cooperation on investment, services, and regulatory framework. At this ministerial meeting, we will spend two half days taking stock of achievements we have made, mapping up to the future, chartering the course, and identifying priorities for our next step. Dear colleagues, this ministerial meeting represents a great deal of responsibility and relevance because it is an important event preparing for the upcoming economic leaders meeting. As co-chair, I will faithfully fulfill my capacity. I look forward to your support and contribution. I believe as long as we join hands, move ahead with openness, inclusiveness, sincere cooperation and win-win spirit. This ministerial meeting will achieve positive, practical and constructive outcomes, paving the way for the success of Economic Leaders Meeting. Thank you.